time is money and retouching is time. So let's jump into Photoshop and let's look at how to save some of both here. All right, so I've got my actions panel. I've got some images open uh, to install nitty gritty. We're just going to take the actions that we've unzipped and just drop them right into Photoshop and we'll see them open up here in the actions panel, which you can as always find from the window menu. Okay, so I always keep it open. I'm just gonna move it to the top here. And I'm going to click here, and I'm going to switch them to button mode. And just like all our other action collections, we have this nice, pretty button mode now with all the color coding and handy dandiness, all right? Nitty gritty is all about finishing details, right? Whether it's kind of an illustrative or a textural look, or whether you're dealing with detail or the undertones of an image, sharpening, noise, blurring, all that cool stuff. And I'm going to show you what it can do in brief. We'll probably do more videos training on this on the future, but I want you to be able to jump right in and use nitty gritty. So at the top here, you'll kind of see the purples. In, in our actions, those tend to be kind of the one clicks, uh, meaning they'll probably look pretty good right out of the gate, right? Uh, and a lot of these other actions will as well. But the, the beauty here is this is all vertical editing. So let's actually do it. Let me run one. Let me say, let's run beauty illustrated. Let's go for a more illustrative look. So we've got a nice image, but we want to finish it. The amazing thing about Nitty Gritty is it's a fairly condensed collection, but it's extremely powerful, extremely advanced techniques in Photoshop. I mean, the kind of stuff that if you were to manually do this to an image, you might spend hours on, okay? So the time saved here is huge. And the beauty is it's not about getting an effect, ooh, that's pretty, that just looks like uh, my look or someone else's look. Because you'll see this runs, okay? Here's the beauty action, and we've run it on here. And if you expand it, now you can, you'll see the group. Everything's nice and tidy within a group down here in the layers palette. Uh, you can mask if you want, all that good stuff. Don't stop here, though. You can take the main group, and you can adjust the intensity and the opacity, right? But you can go down, and you can control every layer. And this is why I love Photoshop actions, because we can build these effects on a theme. But really, there's a, there's a thousand more possible combinations within this single action. So you can leave it as is, or you can just start playing around. Don't be afraid to go adjust the opacity of different layers, turn layers on and off, adjust the master opacity, mask things in and out. But nitty gritty fills a gap, right? We have Loomis and it's like luminosity masking and tone remastered. You have Alchemist, which is a phenomenal retouching collection. Nitty gritty is a new level of, of finishing, surface detail, illustrative look, sharpening, everything. Look, let's look at the details here. So what's happening, right? We're getting these beautiful skin tones, but at the same time, there's a radiance, there's a sharpness to it. And you can see if you look at the layers, there's a whole lot going on. So I can adjust this. I can turn it up and down, make it more intense and illustrative. And, you know, this really, this is almost a painterly look, and yet you still have you still have all this control and you can change anything you want in here. We could do, we could honestly do a whole video of taking this one image and just working with the layers to make tons of different combinations. But uh, I'm not going to do that today. All right. So for now, we close this one and we will just move on. I'm going to show you guys another image. So that was just one action. Now we could expand, we could stack. Remember, this is vertical editing that we do in all of our actions. So you'll see when we run an effect, when we run an effect, The effect runs, it's in a group, it builds, and you could go and you could add another effect on top of it, right? You could go to Loomist, or you could go to Alchemist, you could add an effect on top of it. And so here's like this epic grit, right? You'll see it run, and it's kind of this faded, gritty, uh, edgy look. But then we immediately have options. I can adjust the saturation to more natural, or to disabling it, right? I can control all of that. I can adjust the master opacity. And then go down here and I can have a black and white and have an edgy black and white. But let's say I want to do more, right? Maybe I want this at master opacity at 100. I'm going to go down and I'm going to control the balance and the texture a little bit to control how much intensity and brightness I want, right? So I'm going to adjust these layers. And what am I doing? I'm actually mastering the tone and the differences between the texture, the highlights, all that kind of stuff. But it's focusing on that finished surface of the image. Now I say, well, I want to draw in focus. This is pretty, but let's draw in focus. I could manually burn and dodge. I could go to an uh, action collection like Loomis. But one of the things I always try and do when I'm building an action collection is 
this is what it's for, but how do we make those tools more efficient? So you'll see utilities in here as well, like shadow paint. So I can click shadow paint. It's going to run the action and you're going to see nothing. Why? Because the command that just came up is the actions there. It's all masked. You'll see it right here. And that black mask means it's all hidden. All I have to do is take the brush, which is already selected from the action, make it the size and opacity I want. And I can paint in deeper shadow and darkness in certain areas to draw out what I want in the image, right? Just like this. So very effective control. And I'm just going to kind of go through here, guys, and just quickly work with these. Let's talk about details for a minute. Nitty Gritty was kind of started on the concept of we need better sharpening tools, not just make it sharp, but how can we control detail at a finite level? Here's an old image, a really pretty image from Yellowstone. It was done on a 5D Mark II. And so you'll see in these shadows, older sensor, some noise here. Let's work with that first. So the image looks really good. We could burn and dodge. We can do details, things like that. But the image looks really good. But you know what has some issues is the noise and the shadows. One of the problems is when you run a noise reduction, it tends to lose detail everywhere. So we did a very special little action in here down in the blues, which is your sharpening noise and detail, right? So you can add some grain, you can do sharpening. There's, there's advanced sharpening. We're talking about like frequency separation sharpening and all this stuff. We went and we dug in and we used advanced techniques. These are not simply quick masks and things like that that you could just do in two seconds these are very powerful techniques let's run the shadow noise cleaner from nitty gritty and what's going to happen right reducing noise is always going to cost you some detail so what we did with this is we said well this noise generally comes into the shadow so let's make an action that we have all the control over that will run and clean up those shadows while retaining our beautiful highlights in the image that's exactly what Shadow Noise Cleaner does. And so you'll see as you go through Nitty Gritty, and here's our, our look right here, right? Just like that. Now we can say, okay, let's, let's run some sharpening. Let's just do like an everyday sharp. And a lot of these actions, you're going to see that they all run in a similar fashion. In a similar fashion, they all run similarly to every other action. Now you can see that this has a nice sharpening, but it doesn't bring a bunch of noise back in. Okay, so we've just run a couple actions on here, on this image, and let's look at both of those and kind of see what we've done. Let's get down to those details and just look at this. So Nitty Gritty gives you that finite control over the kind of details that, that separate the men from the boys. You're going to print. You want an image that's absolutely amazing. You might say, well, I want more intense, right? So let's, let's use another sharpening tool. And you'll see there's four or five different sharpening tools in here that have different levels. And the best way to learn these things is to play with them. The beauty is they all stack. They all have that vertical editing concept that we teach in Photoshop where you can just keep building, right? And so I can add crystal clear on top of this and again, bring even more. But don't forget, you can go down to these layers and I can adjust the opacity, the intensity of this. Now we're getting ultra sharp and you wanna be careful you don't do too much with sharpening. I might dial this back just a little bit. Uh, heavy sharpening is great when you're trying to show a before and after on the screen. But in reality, it's all about balance, okay? So look what we've done in here. We've really brought out the detail in the image. And again, you've got the masks, you've got the layers. The, the combination possibilities here are truly endless because it's not like a preset where you click it and it's applied, right? That's one of the reasons we love Photoshop and getting those more advanced uh, retouching tactics down is because I can come in here I'll use my actions all the time on retouching. Loomist, Alchemist, Nitty Gritty now, because these are, these are actions I made, right? These are effects I designed, and yet I know from experience, and time is money, some of these effects, I could spend a whole day, and I would not be able to recreate that effect. And that's one of the exploratory things of Photoshop is you'll get a different look every time you manipulate this. You, can, you could make a thousand different looks from a single action on something like, like Beauty Illustrated, right? The power there is just remarkable. Let's take a look at this one. Here's another image. Let's run the halo. 
Halo is kind of inspired by the Orton effect, but we bring in underlying details that, that totally change it around. And so you retain detail. See what's happening. We're bringing nice, a nice kind of soft glow in, but we're retaining detail. At the same time, I could go and I could control, right? Here's the hyper layer. This is controlling how much subtexture is in there. So I could mask part of that out. I could turn it down. The over texture that goes on top that keeps the glow from being too blurry, right? I can adjust those layers. I can adjust the master. I can paint on these masks to mask it out in certain areas, right? I can click the mask, take my brush, and say, well, I want to bring some detail. I want the VW to retain gritty detail and have everything else be kind of soft and have a little bit of an ethereal feel to it, right? And then I can dial that back exactly where I want it, just like that. It's all about control, right? Look at this portrait here of this old dude, all right? Let's go in and let me delete what's here so I can just start over and show you guys. It was turned off, but let's run, let's run the epic grit on this, okay? So here's this nice image, well lit. It's already pretty sharp. I don't want to over sharpen it. What I want to do with this is bring out the look that we all know this needs, and that's that gritty, edgy, right? Boom, just like that. Now, this is, is not simply a high pass filter, right? Because we're trying to eliminate artifacts. We want the best effects in the industry here. We don't want tactics that are going to introduce needless artifacting and affect our prints. So we're using the very best tactics like frequency separation and stuff like that. We made an action for details and surfaces and nitty gritties. And we took the time to get into the nitty gritty and do it right. So just look at the detail this is bringing, but no haloing, no nastiness. Now I can go here, similar to like we did on the other image. And let's... Uh, Let's control, you know, how much color we want. Maybe I want to fade the color just a little bit, but not too much, all right? Boom, boom. Now I could keep going. I could keep stacking. I could keep doing more things. So with a lot of these, you can you can run them, um, adjust opacity, and, and walk away if you want, right? Move on. And you got the look you want. But at the same time, you have absolute control because those layers are retained. We're not just giving you uh, a flattened image, uh and saying it is what it is, right? You can adjust all the sub-layers within, and you'll see the efficiency. We've really designed nitty-gritty like our other sets around efficiency. So when you run a new action, if you ran a new action on top of this, you'll see that as you run an action, let's say we ran the Everyday Sharp. This doesn't really need more sharpening, but let's say we ran Everyday Sharp. You'll see that it builds the new group, the new effect on top, while keeping the ones down below it nice and tidy. Now, how much do we want to sharpen this? How far do we want to go? I, I don't know. That's pretty intense. Honestly, I don't think we need the sharpening ad, but you get the idea. Okay, so that said, let's keep moving. Let's try some others here. Now, here's one here. Let's take a look at this one we did, the portrait session uh, that we did for during Photo Kit out on the VW here. Let's run the halo, all right? And we're going to run that halo, and it's going to kind of bring that glow, but also bring some grittiness. And the beauty of this is, instead of saying, let's blur things, we're saying, let's control the surface. That's kind of what Nitty Gritty is doing. So here we have this image, and it's kind of this quirky portrait of my kids. And we can see that it did some cool things with the surround, but maybe it's a little too intense around the faces, right? So again, all I have to do is select the mask. I'm going to take my brush. And I'm going to paint black on the mask to dial back on their faces a little bit. Bring that right where I want it to be. Okay? Just like that. Now I could continue here. I could say, well, let's do the shadow paint. Let's shadow paint. Drop that layer. Okay, it's ready. And all I have to do is paint to darken down those other areas. And let's bring some richness so that we're really being drawn into them. And again, the controls, the details. If you go into Shadow Paint, you'll see that there's highlight controls, right? There's mids, there's deeps. And these aren't just a quick curve applied and saying darken everything. These are, are actions that act intelligently. In many cases, they'll take, they'll take selections, they'll take uh, color ranges, they'll look at your image and say, well, what are we doing here? And on every image, the action will actually be running 
a little bit differently, right? So I can actually turn off the deeper highlights to maintain plenty of those highlights on their face. But I could do the opposite now. Let's run the light paint, which is basically the opposite of the shadow paint, okay? And so I'm going to dial back my opacity a bit on this one, and I'm going to just paint a little bit of lightness into their faces here. And then I can say, well, that's still a little too much, so I'm going to dial back the overall opacity on this. All right, let's see what we've done here with these three actions just stacked on top. A lot of difference here. And this is the subtlety, right? This is what you do on your best work. This is what takes you from somebody who's just taking pictures and editing them in Lightroom to somebody who's mastering photos. And that's why, that's why you guys are using Photoshop is because regardless of your experience level, you know that you need something more right? You know that just a global edit is not enough. We need to be able to get in and really make beautiful images. Now, this is a neat image already, okay? This is a really cool image, and it's the lighting is processed neat. It's very nice, but let's do something cool. So let's go, let's do the master's portrait and really bring out the texture without just overdoing all the intensity and the sharpness. So we're gonna let that run. We'll see the layers pop out at the end there. And there we go. That's, that's beautiful. And you can see, I mean, it's bringing out the wisps of the smoke. It's bringing out all these details, right? And I can go in here and I can control things. I can dial it back if I want. I can leave it intense, but it just really is, <laughs> it's really cool. What can I say? Let's do one other way, though. Let's try it with Adventure Illustrated. Okay, so we looked at Beauty Illustrated. Adventure Illustrated is kind of what the name describes. Imagine this one is even more illustrative. This one is, is almost like a painting, but again, you can have all that control on the underlying layers to determine how much. And it's kind of got that vintage, almost old movie poster look. And if you come in here, you'll see that we've just got an immense amount of details that have just been brought into this. And again, though, you might say, well, I don't want it to be a painting, right? I want it to be a photo. As always, you got all your layers. You can control the intensity of everything. You can control the master intensity. So I can say, well, let's dial this back, right? Some of these effects are really cool, and I'm really proud of some of these effects that we put together in here because they are uh, the best in class. Because I, I, I'm a big print guy. And so as I'm building these more advanced effects, these illustrative effects, these tools, I'm like, eh, I want something that's really going to be like no artifacts, no haloing, something that I have control that I can manipulate and that we can do master works, right? this is for making masterpieces. This is for finishing masterpieces. Nitty Gritty is about taking your best work and making it better. Now, here's a cool one of this elephant. And I'm actually going to click here. Let's actually run Shatter Color. There's a few effects in here that are really intense. Some might even argue over the top, all right? This is very different. <laughs> and I can go in here, and I can just have fun with this. I'm actually going to play with it a little bit um, and say, well, what can I do here, All right? I've got a, a mask. There's intelligent masking going on here to, uh, let's bring some color back into here, just about like that, right? Let's, uh, let's see here. Let's mask some of this back to blue. I won't spend too long on this one. And look, I know this is a different look, right? It's a very illustrative, and a lot of the effects are not, just not this intense, okay? Now, we could go down, and we could say, well, what, what's making up all these different looks? And you can control all these layers, guys. Now, I could add a layer on top and just manually do some painting here to match this, like that, kind of cleaning that up a little bit, like so, all right? And so we might be like, well, this is kind of psychedelic and ridiculous. Well, let's just adjust that opacity, right? And we can make this as mild or as wild as we want it to be by controlling the opacity of the group, right? So I could take a look like that. You might say, well, that looks too much. 
but that look might not be too much if I dial it back. I might run it at 10, 20%. And so you can get some really kind of inventive and creative effects, and you can also get just kind of some mild stuff. Uh, texture, we've talked about noise, we talked about sharpening, right? There's a lot of sharpening tools, and these are these are deep sharpening tools. This is not just a quick uh, unsharp mask. Uh, this is using frequency separation layers, things like that. In fact, most of the sharpening tools are advanced frequency separation techniques, and certainly something worth studying if you're not familiar with how frequency separation works. But let's use something like IntelliSharp and just bring some sharpening in. Some of these effects, as you go forward, some of the best ways, I'm giving you guys a, a feeling of what this does, but it's up to you to apply it to your art and to determine the best ways. And I don't want to pin it down too much for you because you really can uh, have infinite possibilities here. So run the action, get a good look, but then don't be afraid to play with those layers. I'm masking this away from her face a little bit because I like what it's doing uh, in the subtleties, right? But I don't want to bring too much into her face. Now, you know what I want to do? There's nothing wrong with my daughter's skin here. But here's a neat one here, and this is down here in your details. Uh, no, never mind. It's up here. It's the skin surfacer, so it's up with the blurs. I tried to think of of the range here, right? Whether you're doing landscapes or architecture, or gritty portraits or soft portraits, whatever you want, you have the control here. Now, this is a skin surfacer, and you'll see that this is probably too much softness here, right? But there is an intelligence to it. It's retaining a lot of detail, using frequency separation, keeping that skin tones really nice. And I'm just going to click the mask. I'm going to mask it out a little bit, bring some detail back. So I'm just taking my brush, painting black on that mask, bringing the detail back into the hair a little bit. And then I'm just going to dial the whole layer back just a little bit because she doesn't need a lot of smoothing. What this is doing is just without an over-the-top plasticky look, what are we doing? We're bringing those details in. We're, we're help, helping that finishing details of the skin, the grain, getting rid of artifacts, noise, uh, all the way up to more advanced illustrative techniques. And that's what you're going to see in Nitty Gritty as you guys go through here. A lot of really neat stuff. We'll take a look at one more, another one of these kind of Western themes. And let's do a couple. I want to show you a couple of uh, more of these kind of one clicks up here. Um, let's run the Rembrandt Western, okay? Again, kind of an illustrative look. We can control how intense we want it to be. Okay, now, so here's the effect, and we see we've got this illustrative uh, work going on here in this face, but we've also got a little bit of a kind of a softness as well. So we're bringing in detail under the surface and kind of a softness on the surface. A lot of interesting combinations, but again, you'll see you can control everything. So I could dial back the vintage haze on here make it a little more moderate. I could dial back the overall effect, right? So here's one way to process this image. Let's actually turn that layer off. Let's try the Adventure Illustrated. We looked at this one earlier, but it's going to look really cool on this image. And some of these really more advanced illustrative ones, they'll take a, they'll take a little bit to run, but uh, they're not bad. Again, just uh, really cool. Now we can dial back, make it a little more photographic if we want, all the way down to here, or we can bring it all the way up to here, and it looks like something out of a vintage magazine or something. So that, guys, is the Nitty Gritty Collection. At least that's where it's starting. Who knows where we go from here with the free updates in the future, because I've got ideas rolling around in my head. That's how to use it. You load it up, you come in here, you've kind of got your one clicks, your illustrative tools at the top, then you have your surfacers and your blurs, then you have your utilities, and, and a lot of what you can do in here, uh, in those utilities, you'll see some really effective things. So for example, I could click the mask out to, excuse me, mask to only skin tones if I wanted to, right? And I could mask out everything except those skin tones, which would instantly change the texture of the effect. I could do the reverse, though. I could mask away the skin tones and make everything illustrative except the face, right? Sky's the limit. So get it down into those uh, utilities. You'll see things like uh, tools to make low keys darker, finish those details, high keys, make them whiter, um, Quick highlight balance just to kind of bring some highlights in uh, if you need to. This is too much here. This would be a good one to start an image with before you went to your intense effects. If you thought, oh, my highlights are a little bit bright, right? So we could be in something uh, like this 
or one of these here, um, where's our VW shot? We might say, well, let's bring in, let's bring in some highlights. And so we could use the quick highlight balance, shadow painting, light painting. You saw that. And then you'll see down there, again, restoring some highlights, a little bit of the shadows, just a little bit of dynamic range. And then we can, of course, control with the opacity how far we want that to go. And down in the blues here, you'll have your details, noise, grain, sharpness, those subtleties that, that are easy to ignore but never should be ignored because they bring an image into that kind of final beauty that's, that's absolutely stunning. So that is nitty gritty. It's a powerful collection of actions. I think you guys are really going to love what this can do for your images. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, have fun. Play around with those layers and just go to town.